Hello, Timmy Napster here, Executive Vice President of Fortis Pay. We're talking about something really fun and interesting. Uh, it's these two concepts behind the future of travel and uh, airlines, hotels, and how different perspectives are coming into play. What's that future gonna look like? On one hand, we have virtual reality, VR, and how that's going to uh, change and shift business meetings and business travel. And then on the other side, you have the idea of faster travel through uh, companies and organizations like SpaceX. Elon Musk is really pushing for this concept of quicker travel anywhere around the world. You can get anywhere within an hour. Think about that concept and how that can change business. Uh, we've seen different movies like uh, Kingsman, Thor, Captain America, you know, Star Trek, different types of, of uh, shows that are predicting the future and how it may look. And those views and perspectives are very interesting, right? You see a council of people that are sitting that are actually holograms that are not actually in the room. Well, the more real that becomes through virtual reality, right, the more people will actually utilize it. Think of the convenience of being able to say, okay, I want to meet with you, but I don't have to get in a car, get to an airport, sit at, you know, on a uh, waiting in line, getting in, in on the airplane, a delay, so on and so forth, and all just to get somewhere and see somebody face to face. And when we're living in a world of hand sanitizer and, and you know, instead of handshakes, uh, fist bumping and things like that, you start to actually question how much people actually wanna interact together in a room, especially when it takes six hours of time, seven hours of time, eight hours of time to get to where it is you wanna go. Furthermore, we're always restricted by the inconveniences of travel, right? As an example, what would be an inconvenience of travel? One thing may include uh, uh, airline delays, as I mentioned, trying to get to an airport, trying to get parking, then you actually get somewhere, trying to rent a car, get to wherever it is you wanna go. Uh, once you get to that place, you, know, you only are limited to particular times of travel back home, right? So now you have to spend the night because there's no late flight getting out of LA or getting out of a particular small city where you have to connect, right? So all these different issues are happening in order to actually get somewhere. So, you know, Elon Musk comes out with this idea of SpaceX where yes, he wants to get to Mars, but he's saying, outside of getting to space, what if we just went up, you know, out of the atmosphere and came down through this, you know, landed on a pad in a particular area, and that took less than a half hour anywhere in the world using a rocket to get there in less than an hour. Very interesting concept. Would that then change this concept of virtual reality taking over future business travel? Okay, but still, even with that being the situation of having to go from point A to point B in a very quick manner, what Elon Musk and SpaceX are fighting against with virtual reality is this concept of, okay, well, you still have to get a car to take you somewhere, which in Elon Musk's world would be a autonomous driving vehicle that would get you wherever you wanna go, but then there may still be a line because there's not gonna be a rocket available for every, every person. Uh, and then once you get there, you have to get to your destination and still get another vehicle to take you to your meeting and so on and so forth. So until rocket travel is more affordable, because I'm assuming it's gonna be quite expensive, we believe the race to communication in a face-to-face -face setting, face-to-face, -face, not really face-to-face, -face, virtual reality setting, is going to come first. It's going to beat out uh, traveling face-to-face -face with uh, a rocket uh, to, to whatever destination you want to get to in the world. Although it's still going to be something many will use, we believe that's going to be for uh, the private plane traveler first before it gets to mainstream users. Virtual reality is much closer from a technological standpoint. We already are seeing, you know, uh, uh, ESPN, NBA, uh, you know, all these different commercials coming out of how you can have a better experience courtside, right? We're all already, already seeing uh, the home experience, right? This ev evolution from 360 degree viewing uh, to now you're going to look at virtual reality to look at a home or look at a car and so on and so forth. But furthermore, the most interesting part is kind of taking the Skypes of the world, the Google Hangouts, the video conferencing, which is happening in business and now in a personal setting all over FaceTime, all over the world, and making that a virtual reality experience. It's right around the corner. Well, how does this all tie back into business travel?
right? Time is the most valuable asset to us. And if we can save three hours having to go to an airport and have a successful meeting through virtual reality and feel like we're really there, how valuable is that? What does that do to the overnight stay that we may have at our hotel? What does that do to you know car rental? What does that do to all of these different experiences that you may have, banquets and meeting rooms, right? All of this changes in the future. So we wanna keep a close eye on it. We really wanna hear your feedback. It's really interesting to see how this is going to shift uh, and how this battle of who is actually going to win that, right, between virtual reality and quicker travel as the future kind of comes upon us. So please comment below and thanks for listening.